Shalom, everyone. This is Amir Tsarfati, and I am live from Galilee, from Israel. And uh, over the last couple hours, Israelis felt also earthquakes uh, that are actually originating in the northern part of Samaria. Uh, three earthquakes within 24 hours, two of them in the last two hours. Uh, these are not powerful ones. These are below four in the, in the Richter scale, and therefore there was no alert and nothing too, uh, you know, too, uh, too much to worry about. But the uh, shaking of the ground here in the Middle East is definitely something that is affecting also Israel. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the birth pangs that uh, the whole world can watch. And a big portion of the Middle East is feeling it in a very painful way. Why don't we uh, start with a prayer and dive into a not too long, but very, very important update on what is going on in Turkey, northern Syria, and some other things that you really want to know. So, Father, we thank you so much that uh, we can find in you our peace. We can find in your promises our hope. We can find in Yeshua, our Savior, uh, the life and the truth in this very deceptive uh, world full of death and sorrow and pain. And Father, we pray that uh, you will open the eyes of our hearts to understand the wonders of your word and also to understand what is going on around the world in light of your word. We thank you that your word is truth while everything else is such a big lie. We thank you we can lean on that truth. Your word is truth and we need to be and we want to and we ask to be sanctified by that truth. We thank you. And we bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. So again, shalom, everyone. This is Amir Tsarfati, and I'm live from Galilee, from Israel. Again, as I started um, just a few minutes ago, a third earthquake in Israel in a row. Uh, in fact, the first one was uh, last night. The second one was two hours ago. The third one was right, uh, right now, and it was all uh, in the same area, uh, right next to Shiloh in uh, the Benjamin area in northern in Samaria. So um, not too much has happened. Again, nothing uh, 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 to be uh, you know, concerned about, but definitely something big happened early Monday morning at 4 a.m. Um, and this is where we go we're going to start. Take a look at this one, please. This is Karaman Marash, city in southern Turkey, 1.7 million people. And take a look at this complete devastation that you're uh, uh, watching right now. These are drone footage of probably 80% of the city that is gone. And um, just for you, just so you know, I, I just gathered a photo of the city before and after. Again, 1.7 million people, very big city in eastern, east, southeastern part of Turkey. And take a look at this. Take a look at this. To the left, the city with all the buildings standing. To the right, what's left from the city with maybe... A quarter of the building standing, maybe even less than that. This is just one out of so many villages, towns, and big cities that were terribly affected by the 7.8 that was followed by a 7.6, 7.5 uh, uh, magnitude earthquakes that struck uh, Turkey and northern Syria on Monday morning in the middle of a very cold front, freezing temperatures, which are also a big, big uh, problem uh, to be able to find people and hold them alive uh, for long under the rubble. So 
there are two things that the rescue teams are are are, are, are trying to fight right now. The, the the weather is terrible, but also the aftershocks. We're talking about non-stop aftershocks um, that uh, continue to uh, or cause standing buildings to continue to collapse more and more. And when I'm when I'm talking about collapsing video uh, collapsing buildings, um, take a look at this, please. Now, as you could see, this is way after the earthquake took place. These buildings were damaged and the aftershocks caused more buildings to collapse than the earthquake itself. And that's the problem. There are thousands of buildings such as this one uh, that are uh, still standing and the rescue teams are around this area. And uh, this is uh, what's going on there. In fact, let me show you another video that might uh, cause you to understand the problematic aspect of rescue, uh, rescuing people right now. Okay. I don't know if you understand, but people don't even know which building is okay to stand by or to stand right next to because every building right there right now can be uh, collapsing within seconds. The aftershocks are not the uh, minor ones. We're talking about uh, above four and above five. And uh, right after the earthquake, some of the aftershocks were actually six and even above. And therefore, the situation on the ground with the rescue teams is catastrophic. But nevertheless, we have some amazing moments over there that never leave uh, any eye uh, dry. Um, and uh, one of them is this one that I really want you to see. Uh, take a look at this amazing video. Um, Take a look at this one, please. What you just saw is a baby that was born. Um, and the mother died. The whole family died. They managed to cut the umbilical cord and get the baby out while the rest of the family is dead. And they rescued the baby from under the rubble because the baby's life is important and they they rushed with a blanket and they I mean, it's freezing temperatures i mean they they need to also take care of that one but what i want you to know folks is that uh, if you follow me on telegram many of the videos that i uploaded are on how we you know the rescue teams recovered um children and toddlers and uh, babies uh, that uh, were, thankfully were found alive and uh, survived. In the beginning, it was 10 hours, 12 hours. But today, the Israeli team just rescued a two-year-old that uh, it, it's been over uh, 50 hours since uh, the earthquakes took place. And uh, they managed to rescue him and alive. This is amazing. I have tons of videos on, on my Telegram channel, which I really hope you are finally following because this is the only place where you can get those things. I'm telling you folks, during this time, I was following American media. I was shocked. I was shocked that a day after one of the most devastating events uh, of, the, of, of the century, and we're talking about minimum of 20,000 people that are dead. Right now, the number that they are um, releasing, which is the confirmed deaths, which means they found the bodies, it's over 12,000.
this is the bodies they managed to recover and they managed to confirm that they're dead. There's probably twice the number of, uh, uh, that is still not found and that is under the rubble. When, when a 12-story building is collapsing, uh, what you will be able to find is those on the top floors because now they are the closest to you. Everything else is just, just flat underneath. It'll take days, maybe even weeks to recover them. So we're talking about 20, 30, maybe even 40,000 people that might lose their life. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of people that were injured and many of them are now without any roof. Uh, and you're talking about freezing, freezing temperatures. And while all of this was happening, I was trying to find something on American legacy uh, media channels. And all I saw, all I saw is the Grammy Award ceremony and uh, Beyonce being late and, uh, and uh, stuff that has to do with inner politics and while all of this is going on now, let me also tell you this. While these two earthquakes took place, it was four and then it was, a, if I'm not mistaken, it was 8 a.m. around, you know, Turkey time. This was the time the Grammy Award ceremony was uh, held in the um, Los Angeles uh, um, you know, one of those, uh, I think it was like the uh, Staples Stadium or something like that. And um, the reason why I'm saying that is that's what was being uh, displayed over there. This is it. Pure satanic um, performance that the hostess, the one that introduced uh, these two people, uh, she said, uh, I'm proud to introduce a very unholy uh, performance. And then, of course, they went on the stage and that's what we saw. You do not want to know what was going through my mind when I saw this. What was going through my mind when I saw innocent, you know, babies being, you know, crushed underneath the, this buildings while spoiled, well-fed, nicely dressed people sitting there and not, I wish they only worship Satan alone, but they worship him live with hundreds of millions of people watching and being affected by it. And so I was, I was, you know, taken by this whole thing. And, and honestly, one of the things that you're about to see a lot is the number of children that was affected by this earthquake. And it's not a coincidence that I'm showing you uh, children being rescued. Tons of children. There's more children in that part of the world. Anything from west, east of Western Europe, which means Turkey, and eastwards towards Asia. I mean, I've been to the Philippines now in Indonesia. I know tons of children. Why? Because they don't kill children. <laughs> When, when, when someone is pregnant, they give birth to that child and they work hard to su support that. And yes, they have tons of children. And this whole culture of let's kill children is not there. It's just simply not there. Whereas on the, in the Western world, you don't see that many children. It's all about comfort, it's all about my career. I choose the timing. And if it's not the right place in the right time with the right person, let's kill the baby. Look, look to what extent these people who rescue that baby that was just born, who still had his umbilical cord attached to the dead mother. Look how fast they, up, they, they work to, to rescue a baby and make sure he's alive. Versus a whole mindset in society that sanctifies death. And while the mother is perfectly fine, they will kill the baby. Whereas that mother is dead, not because she chose to. It was a horrific, horrific thing. 
uh, that happened to her and to her whole family, and the baby was saved. Just think about it. You can see and you can, uh, under, I mean, I'm, I'm disgusted by what I see on, in the Western society nowadays when it comes to how life is no longer valuable. And, you know, uh, you know, you know I, I am exposed to a lot, a lot of videos, a lot of material that I will not post. I will not post because it's too hard to watch. But one of the one of the things that I saw um, is as they cleared some of the rubble, they found a father dead holding his baby girl. She's dead as well. Another thing that you can see, which I will show you because it was a, a, a photo that was uh, very famous all over the world. Um, and I think you deserve to see it is this photo. This is a photo of a father. You can clearly see him sitting there and he, you're probably asking, what is he doing? But this is why I added the, 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 the picture on top. Um, He's holding the hand of his dead 15-year-old daughter. He refuses to let her go. Children are a heritage. Whether it's the newborn baby that was saved, alive, thankfully, and his mom is dead, or it's a, or it's a, a father in his late 40s, early 50s, holding the hand of an already dead 15-year-old girl. Another uh, thing that you may want to see, uh, uh, which is, uh, you know, very moving, is this one. Take a look at this one. Babies, children, rescued. I have dozens of those uh, videos, and you can see many of those on my Telegram channel. But all I'm trying to say is that you're, uh, we need to pause and ask ourselves, um, in what kind of world do we want to live? A world that sanctifies death and a world that is very comfortable and well-fed and very wealthy? Or a world that will do whatever it takes to save the life of a newborn, unborn in any, any age of any baby. That's the world I want to live in. And I want you also, um, I, almost, I, I want you to, uh, to see um, another thing. Uh, let's, let's talk for a minute about the earthquake itself. Three days before the earthquake, a Dutch uh, expert who is, who's been following the seismological uh, developments in that area, tweeted the following thing. Take a look at this. He said, sooner or that's three days before, sooner or later, there will be a more or less magnitude of 7.5 earthquake in this region, South Central Turkey, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. This Frank Hugerbeets um, um, predicted it. Uh, but again, a lot of people could have predicted it because, and, and now I will show you the problematic part of Turkey when it comes to uh, this. Now, take a look at this map. Let's try to think for a second. Take a look at this. You know, as you can clearly see, there are several plates that are moving uh, and there are fault lines between those plates. As you can see, there is the Arabian plate that is moving up towards the north. There is the Anatolian plate that is moving towards the west. And there is, um, and basically they collide right at that fault line where those two earthquakes took place, as you can clearly see. And, and believe it or not, 
believe it or not, folks, um, uh, when, you know, we're talking about um, Turkey, they say that Turkey moved towards the West because think about it, this Arabian plate pushed this one that is moving to that side. Turkey moved nine feet westwards. Do you understand what I said? Turkey, most of that country is three meters, nine feet now west of where it was prior to this earthquake, which explains the magnitude of this earthquake. There's a whole fault line that is now created, uh, a, a crack that is 100 kilometers long, 100 kilometers long crack um, 60 miles long. This, this is phenomenal. All of that happened. All of that happened um, within hours. And the aftershocks, I want you to see the number of aftershocks. Look how many. And there's many more. I, this is something I took only from a few hours ago. There are tons of aftershocks all around that region that are still in the level of six and five and four. And uh, every small aftershock like this causes the weak buildings already that were damaged by the main one to collapse. They stop the rescue efforts in, in parts of Turkey because buildings continue to collapse uh, and, and in one case, on top of the rescue team, which now is uh, another tragedy by itself. With all of that, uh, I want you to know that the, you know, the enemy is still working. The enemy is working now. Let me let me tell you how exactly. So Iran, for the last few years, has been flying cargo planes to Syria with weapons and radar systems and parts of UAVs, all of that to build a major military presence right on the border with Israel so it can attack at, at the moment it wants. Israel has been attacking those weapon shipments and destroying them hours after they land. Now, this particular earthquake felt like a ripe fruit in their hands because now under the guise of relief and rescue and aid uh, operations, they are flying cargo planes, 747s and Aleutians. And uh, they're flying cargo planes loaded with what they say is 20 tons of relief um, and medical equipment and stuff like that. Everything is covered with a tarp that you cannot see anything from it. And what Israel is suspecting is that they gear up because they know it's only a matter of days and weeks before uh, that's it. Um, you know, the world will, will no longer look at it as relief efforts. And right now they sent the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps all the way to the region. And he's commanding over an effort to side by side by helping Syrians in northern Syria and Turks. He is also managing an, another operation that is going on over there. Another thing I want you to know about Iran that, you know, um, I couldn't, you know, go online. I was a little bit uh, uh, not feeling well, but there was um, an Israeli Mossad operation that... Um, basically um, took place in Isfahan in Iran, central Iran, where we managed to smuggle parts of uh, UAVs. We assembled them on the ground and we flew UAVs to the rooftop of a secret installation of the Iranian uh, uh, nuclear program. We created, listen to this, a hole in the roof, two holes. If you follow me on Telegram, you saw it, two holes on the roof. And we managed to lower a specific explosive that will hit a specific device that is in the size of roughly two wash machines, which is crucial 
to the conversion of the enriched uranium into material they can prepare a bomb from. Because the Iranians continue their effort. You know, it's not a uranium for energy or for, you know, innocent, uh, you know, innocent uh, cause. They are all the way towards the bomb. Israel managed with precise human intelligence. We managed to fly UAVs to the rooftop, make a hole, go inside, destroy that device, and that's it. In response today, take a look at what the Iranians did in Isfahan uh, in response. Take a look at this. So um, they showed today, this is in Isfahan. On the right-hand side, a ballistic missile that has Hebrew on it says, death to Israel, mavet l'Israel. They literally wrote in Hebrew letters. And on the other side, you can see the, the flag of Israel on the floor, so people will step on it. Uh, so, uh, and that is because they are furious about the Mossad operation from a couple of weeks ago in Isfahan. So in Isfahan, you know, this is exactly what happened. Um, look, let me... Let me say this, and it's, it's, it's very important, and I hope all of you can share it, by the, by the way, can share it, because you never know what, you know, the big techs are going to do with this information. But I, I want to tell you folks this. It's important that we understand that in the last three years, in the last three years, um, <clears throat> since basically January 2020, we had a pandemic. Then in 2022, uh, a war that is equal almost to the, mag the magnitude of World War II. You don't understand how devastating the war in Ukraine is. It's beyond, uh, it's beyond what you can ever think. I have footage I, that I will, I, I'm, uh, it's on my Telegram channel. I cannot show it to you right now. It will be censored, and I don't want this whole video to go to waste, but I want you to know that even chemical weapon is being used right now. But what I'm trying to say is this. We have a wake-up call. We have, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about pandemic, which is, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about uh viruses and stuff like that where we have wars and we have rumors of wars and we have a biblically proportioned earthquakes that are happening around the world in in uh probably strength and in timing that is increasing um and this is exactly the definition of birth pangs. This is exactly, and you need to understand what we see now is a sample, a sample. It's a foretaste. It's, it's just a little, a little, um, you know, uh, introduction to what the whole world will go through hundred times uh, more in, in intensity and, and in devastation than, than what we see. What we have been exposed to in the last three years, and especially over the last year or so, is something that should be taken by all of us as a big, a great, and loud wake-up call. And I want to remind you that the disciples, when they came to Jesus... They said, what is the sign of the end and of your coming? And Jesus answered and said to them some things that a lot of people misunderstand. You know, take a look at, at this. He said, he says, you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. And look what he said. See that you are not alarmed for those things must take place. And, and then look what he added. But it is not yet the end. 
And then he says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. And look what he says. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. The Greek word right there, because I know in the, in the King James and in New King James, it says sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. But the Greek word, which in Strong's, it's 5604, uh, it's odin, odin. And, and uh, odinon is, is in plural, of course. And what I want you to know, it appears in, in, of course, Luke. It appears in Mark. It appears also in 1 Corinthians, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And um, this is exactly not only referring to uh, the events themselves, as far as earthquakes and wars and all of that, but the frequency and the intensity thereof. And what I believe all of us are going through right now, I believe we're going through those birth banks. I believe that we see the intensity and the uh, 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 you know frequency of all of these things dramatically increasing uh, in, in ways that, you know, every time I looked at the, um, at the meter uh, that detects earthquakes, I, I was like, what is going on here? I've, because even the greatest geologists are saying, we've never seen anything like this. We've never seen anything like this when it comes to the frequency and the intensity that we see right now. In fact, um, I just uh, wrote it um, on Telegram um, a few minutes ago uh, before we began. Um, I, I wrote this. There's a very well-known professor in the Beirut University. Uh, his name is Atta Richard Elias from the Lebanese University in Beirut. And you know what he said? You know, he's, of course, looking at the movements of the Arabian plate that is pushing upwards and the uh, Anatolian ones and the um, uh, you know, uh, African one, and basically said, he warns that one more shift of, the, of, of those plates will erase Lebanon off the map. And many times people, you know, when we think about why Lebanon is not, you know, attacking Israel in Ezekiel 38, and, and, and when we hear about why Damascus is going to be completely uninhabitable and destroyed, in Isaiah 17, immediately we sail with our imagination about some nuclear war and about some explosion or about some Israeli action that will bring about um, rage. But, but, but think about it. Neither Syria nor Lebanon are mentioned in the Ezekiel 38 war, which we believe is the next thing that is going to come, that is going to happen. They're not mentioned now. Again, for the longest time, all of us were talking and, and you know thinking about you know what's going to destroy Damascus. Is it going to be a nuclear war? Is it going to be? But I think that in the last few days, another very very realistic option was added. An option that is definitely biblical, based on the answer that Jesus gave to his own disciples. Again, when he mentioned the wars and we mentioned, when he mentioned the pestilences and when he mentioned the earthquakes, he mentioned them as birth pangs. They are merely the beginning of the birth pangs. So we, we have to understand that we are being given not just the words of Christ from 2,000 years ago to his disciples, we have it as a reality all around us. Our generation is the only generation that can see Israel back in the land. The only generation that can see Jerusalem back in their hand. The only generation that can see the Jewish people already having blueprints for a third temple. The only generation that is watching as in the days of Noah. Look what's gone. I mean, uh, when I saw this display in the Grammy Award ceremony, I thought to myself, exactly as in the days of Noah, 
I mean, and this is exactly part of the answer that Jesus gave them, speaking of how it will surprise them all. And uh, and as he said, you know, you can clearly see that as in the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also the coming of the Son of Man will be. And so, you know, it's going to affect the whole world. Our rapture out of here and the beginning of the most destructive and devastating set of events over the span of seven years. All of that is, is going to happen for sure. But all of that is going to happen after God already exposed all of us to these birth pangs. And he told us in his word, A, not to worry, and B, to take heed. To, to, to see. Now, we don't know the day, but say, look at what's going on all around us. Look at what is happening. And I, I, I can only tell you this. I can only tell you that these things that are about to happen, the global catastrophe of a magnitude mankind has never seen before that will happen, that is going to be the judgment of God. What we saw here now is not the judgment of God. This is the consequences of sin that caused the flood, that caused everything we see today. But I want to remind you what Romans 13 says, because this is what is important. It says, do this knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation, the salvation of our body, as in Romans 8, now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the days at hand. And then he says, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Which means everything you saw in that ceremony in Los Angeles. This is exactly what he says, don't take part of this. And do not, uh, you know, let us walk properly as in the day. Not in reverie and drunkenness, not in lewdness and not in lust, not in strife, not in envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. And, you know, I woke up this morning at 3.20 a.m. to the sound of thunders that we as a family, I don't think we've ever heard before. Literally, we thought that the country is being attacked with missiles and rockets. It was just the booms were so loud. And the lightnings were so bright as if something big uh, hit the ground. And when I met other people throughout the day, they said exactly the same thing. And I realized that probably this low pressure weather front is affecting both the shift of plates under the ground, but also the intensity of everything that is above the ground. Something has shifted and it's very, very big. The ground in Turkey has an open crack, as I said, of 100 kilometers long. It moved the whole country nine feet westwards. The birth pangs have increased significantly. And I'm not uh, saying that to you in order to scare. I'm saying that to you in order to prepare. I think that we need to understand that God is telling us something. And uh, we have to be very careful, very, very careful of two things. One, to be indifferent. And to, <laughs> and again, when I looked at the legacy media channels uh, in the US, no wonder people are indifferent. They don't, they don't hear anything. All they hear is that Beyonce was late to the Grammy Award ceremony. All they hear is stuff that has to do with Hollywood and, and then, so indifference is one problem, but another problem is also panic. Panic. 
there are those that will use all of this to sow panic. Listen, within the first 24 hours, I had on my Telegram channel to refute two main things that were already flooding social media. One, they reported as if a nuclear plant in Turkey uh, has exploded as a result of, of uh, the earthquake and now radioactive radiation is covering the whole area and millions are going to die. That is a big lie that never happened. And you know what they use? They use footage from the Beirut explosion from 2020, August of 2020. That's one thing. The other thing that they, they you know, remember this Dutch geologist that warned about earthquake coming within three days? Well, they took his Twitter account and they, they uh, created a, um, an image of, of his account saying that in the next few hours, a 9.6 magnitude earthquake is going to hit Turkey and it will destroy the whole country. Now, this is mentally disturbed people that wants to sow panic, of course. But there are enough people in the body of Christ that will sell you panic, that will cause you to be afraid, and that will, that will um, you know, turn all of this into pure, cheap sensationalism. I want to encourage you not to fall into this. Look, we as believers were told, take a look at what he says. We were told, see that you are not alarmed, or in New King James, that you're not troubled, for those things must take place. The end is not yet. They'll tell you it's the end. They'll tell you the tribulation has begun. They tell you that we are in this bowl, or in this seal, or in this thing. They'll cause you to be panic. Be careful. Trust me, they are waiting for these type of things to happen, to spread this panic, unnecessary one. So be careful of two things. I believe that indifference is a big enemy and caring more about Hollywood than about what's going on around the world is a big mistake, big mistake. And the other thing I want you to warn you about is the alarmists and those who sow panic and cheap sensationalism. Stay away from them. Um, there's so much more that I want to say, but I want you to, if possible, please be the best evangelist in the world by click clicking the share button right now. All I'm asking you, one thing, share. And if you can, please follow me on Telegram to get updated 24-7 with more to come. Thank you for listening. Let me pray over you the Aaronic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace. We need to have the peace that comes from the Prince of Peace. He is the Lord of Peace. He can give you peace now and forever here and everywhere. His name is Yeshua. And in his name we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Look at this one. And Shalom. Join the Amir Sarfari and Behold Israel channel on Telegram. Here you will receive daily updates and audio messages from Amir. You can also take part in our community and reply with comments. Getting started is easy. Simply download Telegram from the App Store, then visit the Behold Israel Telegram channel in your browser. From there, click Preview Channel, then click Join. That's it. See you on Telegram.